Sure. So I'm the CEO and founder of RealtyMogul.com, and we are an online marketplace for real estate investing, and we do crowdfunding for real estate. So we've built a marketplace for high net worth investors to come onto our marketplace and invest and diversify across real estate assets. I think that there's a fascination with crowdfunding right now across the real estate industry. You know, when the when the political legislation came out in, in April of 2012, I don't think anybody realized that real estate was going to be the biggest asset class that was impacted by crowdfunding and online capital markets. So I suspect that there'll be a lot of questions about that. Um, there's still a lot of confusion in the industry on what is it and how does it work and is it legal and, you know, are people really doing this? Is this actually happening? Um, so I expect that I'll get a lot of questions around that and, and can share you know, our experiences as one company in the crowdfunding vertical and actual deals that are getting done. Now, when you refer to crowdfunding, yeah. see, the pro part of the problem is the word crowdfunding. Sure. It has different meanings. Sure. As applied by your company, mm -hmm. what does crowdfunding mean? So I think crowdfunding from a thousand foot view is pooling capital together online. Um, so it is the ability to use an online website and online tools to pool capital together. For us, crowdfunding, that's, that's what it means. Um, we today are limited to a certain subset of investors. These are accredited investors, so they, they're high net worth investors or institutions. Um, when a lot of people talk about crowdfunding, they'll talk about you know investing by anybody. For me, crowdfunding encompasses both of those terms. Um, really, it's just pooling capital but today we are limited to accredited investors. Uh, the way the current rules are for a non-accredited investors won't work. I mean, I'll go on the, on the record here saying that they do not work, they will not work. Um, the, the limitations are just too vast. So you're limited to a million dollars in capital raise, which it's, it's not worth it for the time and energy for a commercial real estate transaction. That being said, you know, I've actually been tapped by the legislators to share our experiences and to help them rewrite the JOBS Act. So sort of JOBS Act 2.0. It looks like that cap is going to be raised to five million um, in this sort of second version that's going through Congress right now uh, with some other things that will make it a little bit easier to raise capital from the public, the general. With regard to the non-accredited investor, there are certain expenses associated with that that make it cost prohibitive, prohibitive including the auditing. Isn't that true? Yeah. So in the, in the current form of the regulations, there's an audited requirement. Um, in the new sort of V2 form of the regulation, the audited requirement wouldn't hit in until you've raised over $3 million. In the current regs, it's over a half a million. So in the, the current regulations just don't work. They, they don't apply to commercial real estate. I would not recommend that anyone uses them. Um, but sticking with the Accredited investors, it does work. You know, we don't have those same limitations. But I think that the regulators realize that what they sought out to do just isn't going to work in practicality. There's there's too much overhead. There's too much cost. You know, why would you spend a half a million dollars to raise a half a million dollars? It doesn't make any sense.